Fire Emblem Engage, one of the most highly anticipated games of the year, releases this week. And in this video, I'll be sharing with you 44 things you need to know. That's a lot of things, so let's just get right into it. So Fire Emblem Engage releases on January 20th, 2023, exclusively on Nintendo Switch for $59.99 or your local equivalent. It's being published by Nintendo and developed by Intelligent Systems. Now, interestingly, they're not going to have help from Koei Tecmo like they did on the last game. And in fact, there were a lot of leaks saying that Gust, a studio owned by Koei Tecmo, was going to be helping. However, I couldn't find any official information on this. And even in the trailer credits, it didn't say Koei Tecmo anywhere, only Intelligent Systems. So I don't think they're actually involved in this one. Now let's talk about the story. And it seems like it's kind of a mishmash of a bunch of other games from the past. So a thousand years ago, the Fell Dragon attacked the land of Elios, where the game takes place. Heroes from all other worlds called Emblems were called upon to fight the Fell Dragon, and they were successful and managed to imprison it. Now it's a thousand years later, and your character, Alir, who happens to be a divine dragon, is awoken to fend off the looming threat of the Fell Dragon's return. And just like a millennium ago, you'll have to venture across Elios to find all these Emblem rings to summon them once again. Now much like other modern era Fire Emblem titles, you can choose either the female or male version of Alir. And what's cool is it seems like Alir is going to be a voice protagonist, not a silent one. Now, after watching all the previews I could find, it seems like the story is a little bit more underplayed compared to Three Houses that had a lot of depth and there was a lot of story to that. So that could go either way, depending on how much you enjoy the story in Three Houses. However, to make up for that, it seems like the support conversations have greater depth. It seems like each individual character has more to them. So depending on how you like to engage with your Fire Emblem stories, no pun intended, it will be a little bit of a different balance here. Next, let's talk about combat, and there's a lot to get into here. Now, before you even get into combat, we have to talk about the overworld. Yes, the overworld makes a return. This won't be like three houses where you kind of just start the next battle from a menu. You'll have an overworld that you can kind of explore from one map to the next. Here, you can find different side missions, go back to your base if you need to prepare for the next battle, and then obviously the next main story battle. As for the actual combat itself, it seems like it's going to be the familiar grid-based, turn-based tactical system the series is known for. And there's a lot of returning features as well as a number of new ones. For one, the Weapon Triangle makes a return after taking a game off in three houses. For those unfamiliar, this is basically Fire Emblem's take on rock, paper, scissors, but instead it's swords, spears, and axes. Now the unique wrinkle here is that it incorporates something called a break system. Essentially, if you have a weapon that's weak against a specific character, you will break them and they won't be able to counterattack for another handful of turns. Now, this is cool because you'll be able to follow up with your other characters without the threat of a counterattack, but it can also affect your characters. So you need to be really careful to make sure your characters don't get broken and are left vulnerable for other attacks from other enemies. Next, let's talk about the engage mechanic, the main gimmick for engage here with this game. Now, with this engage mechanic, you'll equip rings on specific characters and essentially you'll pair up with these emblems that are basically Fire Emblem heroes from past games. And this system, is similar to the pair-up system introduced in Awakening. You'll get stat boosts and extra attacks. But also, once you engage with these emblem heroes, essentially merging with them, you'll get special abilities like a huge boost to your movement, the ability to teleport, and big attacks. And you can kind of mix and match these rings with other characters, so depending on who it might work best with, you probably want to experiment a little bit. Now, I know one of the big concerns after watching some of the trailers is that a lot of people thought this would be kind of broken and make the game really easy. However, once you engage with one of these emblem heroes, it kind of goes away you need to fill up a meter and so the way that the game balances this is that the way to fill up this meter is not just by sitting around you need to either attack and engage in combat or for your healing characters just performing heal moves to me this encourages a more aggressive play style which i like and also once you engage with another emblem hero it mashes up the two designs for one big character and i kind of like this because it's unique depending on who you engage with so i think people will have a lot of fun mashing them together and just seeing what these unique designs look like and now there are only so many emblem rings in the game and there's not enough for every character so they've introduced something called the minor emblems now these are still rings that you can equip that give stat boosts and these will be from side characters from past games now you won't be able to summon them like the main emblem heroes but again it's worth equipping these on all your characters to get the stat boosts and it seems like there's sort of a randomness to them kind of a gotcha style system if you will and in fact you can kind of take rings and meld them together to make stronger ones and from the previews that i've watched and read it seemed like people weren't too hot 
caught on this mechanic because it seemed really random, but again, it's going to be worth having on your characters for the stat boosts alone. Something else that I've personally not seen in a Fire Emblem game, but may have been in older ones, is destructible environments. So you'll be able to blow down walls or different fences and just kind of engage with these maps in different ways. And I imagine the AI will also be able to do this, so you're really going to have to stay on your toes and incorporate a really good strategy in each battle. Something else that's cool and is just a nice quality of life feature is that it's going to show your character stats on the battlefield when you're moving them around, so you won't need to fill around with menus, it just has it all right there for you to see. And something else new that they're introducing is that after the battle, you can explore the map itself. You can talk with your characters to get more information, you can find items, and even collect animals to put back in your base that I'll touch on in a minute. And for anyone concerned, the hardcore mode or permadeath is there as well as casual mode. And another feature returning from Fire Emblem Three Houses is the rewind feature. Essentially, if you make a mistake or one of your character dies, you can rewind a number of turns and kind of start over and try it again. Next, let's talk about your home base, the Somniel. Think of this as Garrick Mock Monastery from Three Houses. Here, there are basically three areas of focus. The first one is battle preparation. Here, there's item shops that you can stock up on items for, the armory to get better weapons and equipment, as well as a ring chamber. Now, in the ring chamber, this is where you can deepen your bonds with your emblem characters. And if your bonds are deep enough, you can inherit new skills from them. Also, there's this kind of weird mechanic where you can polish the rings to deepen your bonds with them. Seems odd, but probably ultimately helpful. Next, there is an arena where you can participate in practice battles, and this seems to be mainly to up certain stats or just to grind for levels. There's also something called the Tower of Trials. Trials. Here you can do different trials to earn in-game rewards. And there's also a mode where you can play in co-op. And it seems to be kind of a relay system where like one player will go and then it's the next person's turn and so on and so forth until it keeps looping. And from people who did some translation from Japanese content, it seems like you'll be able to do this with up to five players. And you can also create your own maps and share them with players, which is kind of cool. Lastly, for battle preparation, there are training areas where you can work out and do different mini games that will give you temporary stat increases for the next battle. Next for the Somniel is the social aspect. Here you'll be able to talk with your teammates and deepen your bonds with them. A couple different ways you can do that is you can share a meal with them and give gifts to them. Again, like I mentioned in the story segment, it seems like the bond section here in this game is deeper than it's ever been like in past games, so you'll have a lot of opportunities to get to know your characters better than ever. And the last section that the trailer called everything else, I'm just going to call pure fun here. For one, you have this farm area where all your adopted pets that you found in the world sit at. Here you can take care of them for a variety of rewards. There's also a character called Sami and you feed it for something. The trailer doesn't really mention what and even the previews don't quite know what Sami's for, but it's a cute little animal nonetheless. Next is a clothing boutique where you can buy new outfits for your team. And I don't know if this is for combat or just for walking around the Somniel, but it's kind of cool nonetheless. I I love doing this with my characters, so this will be kind of fun. And there's also a mode where you can do photo shoots where you can kind of pose your characters in different ways. So I know a lot of people are going to have fun with that. There's also fishing where I imagine it's mainly for cooking ingredients and other smaller items, as well as this kind of Panzer Dragoon-esque shooter mini game. They didn't really mention too much of it in the trailer and nobody in the previews talked about it, so I'm not totally sure what this is for. And they also included amiibo functionality. Anybody still use those? And with those, you'll be able to get outfits and a variety of other items. They've also announced an expansion pack which will launch on the day the game comes out for $29.99 or your local equivalent. And there's going to be four waves to it. And wave one, which will be available on launch day, will include Aelgard, Dimitri, and Claude from Fire Emblem Three Houses, as well as Tiki, who's been in a bunch of Fire Emblem games. Wave one will also include some support items, accessories, as well as something called a silver card that reduces the price of item shop and armory items by 30%. For wave two and three, they promise new emblem characters, items, and accessories. And in wave four, they promise additional story content and new classes. And all four waves are set to be released by the end of the 2023 calendar year. Now, as of January 15th, the time I'm recording this video, there's no demo announced or there hasn't been one released, but you never know, there could be one released right before launch. Now, if you're excited for Fire Emblem Engage, be sure to subscribe for even more content about that game, including my full review. And if you enjoy my content and want to help me make more, consider supporting me over on patreon.com slash the gaming shelf. And special shout out to Patreon producer Tyler Kuzava. Thank you so much for watching and we'll see you next time.